Well, the government of Southern Sudan seems to recognize the importance of roads, infrastructure, and they have appointed the wife of a uh, late leader of the SLM, uh, Dr. John Garan, his wife Rebecca is now the Minister of Transport. Um, because the, she, uh, the husband as well as herself have taken this as very important, and this is why she's taking over the portfolio. She has been allocated the portfolio. However, things have not moved as fast as many people uh, expected when the plans were announced. But the minister explained that, you see, they were sworn in much later than expected, say in uh, October, November 2005. Now, to put plans in effect, you have to invite contractors. First, they have to establish their offices, then, prioritize what sectors are to be emphasized on or what roads, then invite for contractors, you sign contracts, select the, uh, the, the appropriate contractors, then after signing the contract with them, they have to move in their equipment before they begin construction. This takes time and this explains why the delay. And what they did was, since even during the war, the World Food Program was already involved in road construction, they donated $30 million to the World Food Program to continue on the road program. Hopefully, they are hoping that then within the next few uh, months, within the third, uh, this is in, uh, say, August 2006, and they say within the next year, uh, the construction phase will pick up. So we hope that within uh, three or four years of peace, some of these programs will be materializing. But this is on the major roads linking the south to the neighboring country, to the north, and the major towns in, in the south. I hope that the emphasis on rural access roads will be, is either included or will be included because I have only so far known about the, 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 the regional and uh, inter-country links. But definitely, as much as those are important, more important are the rural access roads. Because we can link all the regions and neighboring countries without the rural access roads. We have maybe generated the production. There's no industry in the towns. It's the rural area that will produce what will be exported which can be used for importing. Of course, oil may be important in the short run, but even there are no refineries. Oil is exported through Khartoum. And, and, and so, it, for the long term, is really the agricultural sector. And therefore, it is very important we emphasize, uh, if they're not already emphasized, the rural access roads need to be incorporated in the program. And so I address all, you know, all these things about transportation, road access road in one chapter. But the book also covers developments in the past, particularly during the first peace period, 72-73, and why those programs did not work, they collapsed. Because the lack of development in the South during that peace period contributed to the outbreak of the Second War. So, and, uh, and, and so many of these, uh, um, understanding the past would be very important. And the book also includes things like, you know, development of the financial infrastructure, industry, power, and uh, so many sectors, foreign trade, and uh, foreign aid, which was really the main means of financing development in the first peace period. And this time, as much as South is exporting oil, in the initial years, we're going to depend on foreign aid. And what lessons could be learned from the past peace period, which can be useful in, the, uh, in, in, in this peace period. So, uh, um, it's, it's important that uh, this book gives more detail about the issues um, I'm talking about. 
and uh, anybody really working on Southern Sudan or want to understand uh, few prospects of future development of Southern Sudan would probably uh, need to go through it and then can, act, can expand from there because it's just a way of bringing together all the various factors that led to the lack of development of Southern Sudan and possibilities of initiating a program that can lead to sustained development. Many of the writings on Southern Sudan have been on the racial, religious uh, issues and so on, nothing much on the, the, the economics. So I thought that we should bring the economics into focus in this second peace period. Because when people are, uh, you know, they have the means of livelihood and so on, it's unlikely you will take them to war. But if you go on telling them things, telling them how fair you are going to be with them and they are hungry, it is very easy for them to be mobilized to go to war. And this is why even I'm emphasizing on the rural access roads, because the bulk of the people live in the rural area. So these things can all be found there, at least the skeleton. Then you can expand from there and can even write on one sector and so on. But it gives a good overview of the past problems and prospects for the future. Yeah, I, I come from one of the southernmost points of Sudan. Uh, my, our district is called Ye. And I used to work in Khartoum University. Just to illustrate some of the difficulties with transportation, even before uh, the peace agreement, this was in 1985, when the war had just broken out in 1983, it was even difficult to get home. We had a holiday. I decided to go home because I had some family issues to resolve. I knew it was going to be difficult to reach from Juba to home. So I bought a bicycle in Khartoum, sent it ahead cargo by cargo plane. Unfortunately, when I got to Juba, my bicycle had not arrived. So I couldn't ride home. So I went to the district headquarters with a lorry or a, a, a truck. Uh, so that I could connect there, but I failed to connect from the district headquarters to my home, which was about 95 miles from the district headquarters. So I just had to leave my trip home. I had to come back to, uh, to Juba, so I had to fly back to Khartoum. When I got back to Juba from Ye, this is when I found that my bicycle had arrived. But my holiday was over. I had to go to Khartoum to teach. Uh, and, and, and this was two years after the war broke out, but now it is uh, 23 years since the war uh, broke out, and so the situation must be much, much, much worse. So the importance of this transportation is very important. Not only the roads, but also the means of transportation. If you don't have the trucks, you don't have the buses, you don't have bicycles for the rural area, very important. If you do not have these means of transportation, particularly the bicycle for rural mobility and uh, marketing and so on, because the ordinary people are low income, they can't afford the trucks, but they can afford the bicycles. So it, it, it must be very important right, right now that we really emphasize not only on the roads, but also the means. The, the, the vehicles.